Welcome to the Kaboish Chronicles episode 3. In this episode, I'm going to give my review of this prototype shoe after about 100 kilometers of running and maybe another 30 or so of hiking. And I'm going to answer the question, does this concept from deep within Kylian Journey's notebooks work in reality? Before I jump in though, there's a few disclaimers we need to go through in this video. This shoe, the pair of normal kaboishes that normal sent to me for the purpose of testing and review are prototype shoes. These are not final production shoes. So a lot of what I talk about in this video will probably change or be modified slightly when this shoe's actually released. Additionally, this shoe was sent to me for the purposes of testing and review because I have this channel. But Normal isn't going to be seeing this video before it goes live on this channel and you all see it at the same time. And lastly, I need to point this out about product testing in general. Now, this stage of testing that this shoe is in is called wear testing. Generally, it's sort of middle to later stage where the brand has gone through a bunch of uh, evolutions and versions early on where they tested that internally with their athletes, with their staff, with friends and family, and they quickly iterated and got to a shoe that they can make some production versions of or some test versions of to give to a wider group in a wear test. Now, usually in a wear test, the uh, brand will do a short run of shoes, maybe 100, maybe 200, maybe a little bit more for bigger brands. Given that Normal's a smaller brand, they only selected about 120 to 150 of us for this wear test. So they didn't produce a lot of these shoes for this test. Additionally, in these tests, there's usually a short run of sizes. Now, I'm a US men's size nine, so that means I am what's called the sample size. So in other wear tests I've been in, I'm really lucky because I am the sample size. I am the size that the designers and engineers really build the shoe around because the US men's size nine is what World Athletics measures all their measurements from stack heights, geometries, all of that sort of stuff. But in this case with Normal, they didn't produce a US men's size nine. Instead, this is a US men's size nine and a half. They also made a US men's uh, seven and a half, and I think there was a US men's five and a half or six and a half. Again, they were trying to provide a range for the actual testers and participants in this test. Now, what that means for this shoe is this shoe is a full size too big for me because I'm actually a size eight and a half US men's in a normal shoe. In normal, uh, we'll say take your normal shoe size and size half size down because their shoes run long. But I'm also going to say, and I'll talk about this in this video, that some of the construction to this shoe may actually make this shoe a full size and a half too big. So the fact that this shoe is so big on my foot has really limited my ability to really test this as much as I wanted to. And that's also why this video has taken so long. But now, after about 100 kilometers of running in this and another 30 or so of hiking, I have a really good sense of what this shoe is and what's working and maybe what's not working so much. And since this is both an initial impressions and a general impressions video, let's start with the specs. Now I've already done a design deep dive. That was the last episode in this series that goes into all of the specs on this shoe. But again, this is a prototype shoe. So these specs are for my version of these, the size nine and a half US that was sent to me. So we have about 30 mil in the heel, about 24 mil in the forefoot. And the insoles, which you can see here, this is the insole insert that goes into this upper, um, is a six mil drop. And I'm going to say that this is a real feel. It feels more like four to six, and it can feel lower depending on which foam midsole you're actually putting in this shoe. And I'll talk about that in the foam section of this video. Overall, my pair of these weighs 10.75 ounces or about 305 grams, as you can see between the left and right. Um, there's very little difference, which is not bad for a prototype shoe. And usually I'll talk about the feel here in this general specs area, but since this shoe is so dependent on the midsole insert that you put in it, it's kind of hard to do that. So we'll talk more about that in the foam section. Now, the best place to start with this shoe is really with the upper, but when there is no midsole in this shoe, the upper really is the entire shoe. This is a very flexible upper when there's no midsole in it. But traditionally, the upper material here is a matrix upper. 
and it's the same matrix material as you can find in the normal Chirag. Now, I talked about the connection of these two shoes in the previous episode, the Behind the Design episode, but you can see a lot of similarities. And the upper weave and the matrix style upper and the way it's actually built into the shoe is very similar to what you see in the Chirag, but there are differences. Now, one of the primary differences is in the eyelet chain. This is still a very long eyelet chain. If you know the Chirag, this fits the foot very much like the Chirag. Again, it's a very long feeling uh, eyelet chain that really wraps around your foot. It's a little bit more robust that's on the Chirag, but again, this isn't a stripped down ratio, so that makes sense. Now, the toe bumper is one of the primary differences in the two shoes in the sense that the toe bumper on the Koboish is a little less important than it is on the Chirag. So on the Chirag, the toe bumper is a little bit more minimal, but it's a little bit deeper. And that's because there's not a lot of material here in the forefoot or the toe area of the shoe to protect you from rock hits. In fact, the design of this shoe is the outrigger midsole is really what's taking most of the hits. And you can see that I've really torn up this shoe uh, through running through my very rocky and technical terrain. And then this toe cap that's on the upper is really there to kind of keep the material off the uh, toe, but also give you a secondary uh, piece of protection right over the toes, the very sensitive part of the foot. Now on the Kaboish, it's just a little different because we have more midsole or at least the cup sole on the shoe is, you know, a lot higher. It still has an outrigger. It's still there primarily for the protection, but this toe cap also is helping to just give a little bit more structure in the toe area in protecting uh, the toes and that very sensitive area of the foot from rockets. I'm going to say it works in a very similar way. It's just a little bit more robust because there's just more material up here. And the other place where this differs is in the heel. Now in the heel, uh, because you have drop-in insoles in this shoe, the heel has to be a little bit different. And this is one of the things I've actually struggled with in this shoe because of the size. Now, because you're dropping in the midsole in this heel, this heel is very straight. There's not a really deep pocket here. There's some padding here, but it's also a very flexible heel counter in this shoe as well. That's there so that when you drop the midsole in there, you can slide it down and, and seat it in the shoe. So there can't really be a deep cut back here. So I think for some people that typically have heel lift issues because their heels just shape that way, I'm not typically one of those runners. This shoe could give you some heel lift issues in the final production version. I'm sure they're going to resolve that a little bit more, but there's only so much pocket they can build back here where you still uh, need to be able to get that midsole insert into this shoe. And lastly, the tongue in this prototype version is a very flimsy, very lightweight material. This is one thing I hope changes in the production version. I hope they go to the little bit more substantial tongue that's in the Chirag because this one's just a little too floppy. But again, prototype, things uh, will change in the final production version. But the construction of this shoe is very different. As I said, there's not much here uh, unless there's a midsole in this shoe. Now, the other part, or what I would consider the other part of the outsole, is this rubber cupsole, this Vibram cupsole, which is actually what the outsole is actually mounted to. Now, to illustrate this a little bit better, let's look at some crude illustrations of a normal shoe versus the Kaboish. So the Chirag being the normal shoe, the normal type of construction. And that starts with an outsole. On top of the outsole, you have a midsole. The midsole then has an upper that's attached to it. Generally, there's an overlap there. There's usually sidewalls on the midsole that wrap around the base of the upper, and the upper is bonded or stitched, often both, to the midsole. And then to cover that stitching, there's often an insole inserted in the shoe. Well, the Kaboish is a little bit different. We still have a outsole, but we have a upper and the upper again is two parts it's the lower vibram uh cup sole which again think about that more as sort of a rubber or vibram rubber bathtub attached to a matrix upper and effectively that becomes a two-piece upper for really what is the rest of the shoe and then the midsole insert sits inside of that and the insole or the thin insole that's actually on the midsole is actually part of the midsole. So it's internal to the shoe. The cup sole and the outsole are really the entire outside of the shoe. And that construction difference will have a very different feel on foot for this shoe. 
But to explain those fit differences, let's look at this shoe in cross sections. So if we look at the cross section in the toe area, you can see the same pieces. You see the outsole, you see the green midsole, you see the blue upper, and now you can see the foot in there. But the midsole will have what's called sidewalls, and those sidewalls are really what contain the upper. And as you can see in the cross section, those sidewalls have the effect of pinching the upper inwards towards the foot. So even if the shoe has a somewhat generous width in the, in the forefoot, this is why I often feel shoes can feel very constricting in the forefoot because the sidewalls actually pinch the upper material in towards the foot. There's plenty of width there, it's just the perception that it's pinching in. That's just a nature of really standard running shoe construction that's not unique to the Chirag, it's really kind of any running shoe, period. But to explain the fit differences of the Kaboish and how this shoe is going to be different, we need to look at it again in cross-section. So in cross-section, we have the same parts here. We have an outsole, we have an upper, which is the blue part, and then there is a midsole, which is the green part. But the difference now is that the midsole sits inside of the upper. Both the cup sole, which is the darker blue, and the lighter blue of the actual matrix or more traditional upper. What that actually does is allow the midsole insert to push the sides of the cup sole and therefore the upper away from the foot. So even if the Kaboish is in the same last, the same size as a Chirag, the Kaboish is going to feel uh, like a wider shoe and it's going to be substantial. You're going to feel at least a few millimeters, probably more than five mils difference. So people that have issue with uh, normal shoes being overly narrow, the Kaboish could be a really good shoe that finally allows you to run in a normal shoe because of this construction difference. Now beyond my crude illustrations, let's actually look at the Chirag. This is the traditional shoe and you can see that in cross section. You can see the midsole material and how that actually creates a pinch point for the upper material to go inward. So even if your foot is not overly wide, this is still going to feel like a more constricting fit. And again, as a ratio, that makes sense. But something I noticed as I was putting this video together by taking the midsole insert from the Kaboish and comparing it to the Chirag, that the midsole foam, the white foam in this shoe and the actual midsole insert for the Kaboish, they're very similar. In fact, the shape of these two are very, very similar. It's very strange. But it makes sense given the relationship of these two shoes. But if you look at this midsole from the Kaboish, you can see that the foot will sit in here. There are sidewalls on here, and these sidewalls are much more extreme on the Kaboish midsole than they are on the Chirag. But this material will hold the foot into the midsole, but since the out the upper material needs to sit on the outside of this, and there's a rubber cup sole that sits on the outside of the midsole insert, everything's going to be wider. There's just going to be a much more generous fit in here for the same last, for the same width shoe. And I think that's going to be a big game changer for a lot of people with the Kaboish. And where all of this matters for the actual fit of the production version of the shoe is where normal currently says size half size down from your standard uh, size shoe in one of their shoes, whether it's the Shrog or the Tamir 2.0, um, I'm going to say that possibly for some runners, they'll be able to size a full size down in the Kaboish because, again, the cup sole and the way the midsole is going to slide into the shoe, there's going to be more length available, especially in the toe in the shoe, and there's going to be a lot more width available in the shoe. So it's going to be really interesting. I think that's going to be a big game changer for a lot of people who have been wanting to try a normal trail shoe, but the current models are just too narrow. This is going to be that normal shoe that's probably going to be much more accommodating and fit and give you a lot more room to move around in. Now this is where I need to talk about the midsole because the midsole is the other thing that really changes the fit and the feel of the shoe. And that's what's so interesting about this shoe. Often you'll buy a running shoe and it just has one midsole in it and that's sort of the experience you get. You either like that midsole foam or you don't like that midsole foam. You never really get to change the midsole foam. And I know we've all run in shoes before where we're like, oh, I wish this shoe just had this foam or I wish, you know, it didn't have an EVA but it had a Peebo foam instead. Well, in the Kaboish, that's exactly what you can do. And by changing the midsole inserts in this shoe, it's going to really change not only the fit of this shoe, but the performance of this shoe.
Now, for the sake of this test, Normal provided three midsole inserts for this shoe. For the final production version, I don't know if it's going to ship with all three, but all three will be available, and I know they're planning on other combinations of these foams. But the foam story of the Kaboish is what I think is really kind of exciting. It's the thing that I was most interested in. So starting is the KB1 soft midsole insert. Now, this is the Supercritical EVA foam, the normal x foam. This is the same foam that's available in the Chirag and the Tamir 2.0. This is that beautiful mix of cushioning but protection with a dense but still flexible feel. It's just a really beautiful EVA foam. And it's probably one of my favorite Supercritical EVA foams that I've ever run in, especially for trail shoes, because again, I have a lot of feel, but a lot of protection, and it gives me a lot of confidence really bombing down technical terrain. Now, in the Kaboish, I was really expecting this insole to feel very similar to the Chirag, actually, but actually running in this shoe, I found the KB1 soft uh, midsole to be a little too soft. I was actually sinking too much into this, and that's where I'm saying that the, in, the midsole is really going to change the fit of the shoe. Because if you have a softer midsole in this shoe, the more you're sinking down into it, the more room that it's gonna open up vertically in this shoe. And it's gonna really change how this shoe fits and how much room you have. So it's gonna be an interesting thing to consider. Now, I just found this way too soft in the uh, Kaboish, mostly because it's not really contained by the tooling of the sidewalls uh, like you would in a normal shoe. It just can kind of squish out everywhere and for my terrain, which is all very technical, very rocky, very steep up and down terrain, this was just way too soft. However, when I was running on sandier surfaces or especially hiking on sandier, softer surfaces, and there's a lot of that around here, I actually found this kind of ideal because the softness now allowed the shoe to flex and kind of mold around all of that sand. So this was a really nice soft surface. I could see this working really well in snow as well. But again, for my technical, hard, rocky, sometimes muddy terrain, this was just way too soft for my taste. Next up, we have the KB2 or the Reactive uh, midsole. Now this is a super critical TPU. And what's surprising to me about this is that this is the midsole insert that feels very similar to what's actually in the Chirag or the Tamir 2.0. The actual x super critical EVA foam in those traditional shoes, this is the one that feels like that in the Kaboish. But there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more reactiveness to that. That's why they've labeled it reactive. There's just a little bit more pop off the toe in this one. Again, TPUs, this could be a little bit denser. It's going to give you a little, um, just a little bit more energy return. And that's really what this is designed to be. So by far, this was my favorite uh, feel of the shoe, my favorite insole. It also gave me the most consistent fit uh, in the shoe uh, because I'm not sinking too much into this uh, midsole material and I'm getting a very consistent uh, fit with the cup sole and the upper in the shoe. I actually really like that. I found this worked the best for my terrain. It was the right mix of sort of protection, cushion, but a dense cushioning system that felt really good and that little extra pop when I could really sort of uh, be climbing and really sort of be jumping from rock to rock or if I was in the very few kind of long flowy sections that I actually have to run in this, again, just gave me a little extra pop, a little bit more than the standard x Super Supercritical EVA available in the Shrug or the Tamir uh, 2.0, but still not too much where it became uncontrollable. It was the right mix of a lot of things. And this is what I put the most kilometers on in my testing of this shoe because it just felt so good and it felt so much like a normal running shoe. And lastly, we have KB3, which is the bounce uh, midsole in the shoe. And this is a Supercritical Piba foam. Now, this was actually my least favorite of the three, and it's the one that I think probably a lot of people are going to be excited about. It's like, oh, a Piba foam in a trail shoe. That's going to be great. Well, again, for my terrain, this was both too soft and just too all over the place for uh, what I'm actually running here, which again is very steep, very rocky, very technical terrain. It had the softness of the KB1 soft where I was sinking, and because I was sinking into this, it was creating a lot more room in the upper of the shoe. So the fit was a little bit, um, you know, all over the place for me. Because again, as I would compact this and I would sink into it, my foot would move around much more in the shoe, which was already too big to begin with. 
But when this shoe would rebound, you get the resiliency out of this. And I would say this is a moderate resilient foam. It's not tuned like something that you would find in a, uh, a super shoe for racing road marathons. But, you know, it's it's much more reactive or much more um, resilient than you would expect for a trail shoe. I was finding that as I would compact this, I would open up a lot of space, my foot would move around, and then I get this sudden sort of bounce, this like the resilience coming out of this. It was really, for my terrain, not very pleasant. But the long, flowy type single track, which I don't have a lot of, I have short sections of like 100 meters here, 50 meters there, um, no long sort of California carpet, um, you know, beautiful single track that you can see out west in the United States. Um, when I was on that stuff, now this one made a lot of sense. Or if I was running on the road, this made a lot of sense because again, I'd get the softness, but that resiliency would work really well for those um, firmer surfaces or where I'm just trying to go forward. But if I'm trying to get my footing, I'm trying to like, um, you know, really understand my grip and, you know, climb stuff, this was just too much going on. It was changing the fit of the shoe too much. Um, just did not enjoy it. But I do think people that have a lot of long, flowy single track, they're going to really enjoy this. And if you're uh, running on trails that go into hard pack surfaces, paved surfaces, back to trail, this is going to be a midsole that you're going to really, really love in this shoe. And generally by now I'm getting into what is the ride like in the shoe, but I just described all that because it really depends on the midsole that you have in this because it changes the fit characteristics and the way the shoe grips as well as how the shoe propels you forward, which again is really interesting. And I think that gives normal a lot of room to really play with the shoe and play with the midsoles that they'll actually sell for the shoe. And I know they're looking at this as more of a platform as opposed to just a single shoe. The last thing to really talk about on this shoe is the outsole. And the outsole on this shoe is one of my favorite outsoles. It's Vibram Mega Grip Light Base, but this specific tread pattern is the exact same one that's on the Chirag. And the Chirag outsole is probably one of my favorite trail outsole lug patterns that I've ever run in. And as you can see here, these are these same outsoles. This one's a little bit wider, it's a little bit bigger, so you can see there's a few more lugs on this, but it's essentially the same pattern. This pattern for me, for all the technical rocky climbing and descending that I have on my trail, is the best mix of grip with stability, with um, shedding mud and shedding the sand of volcanic soils that I have here. Also for road running, this is actually quite nice. So these shallow lugs are actually really nice. They provide enough surface where on harder surfaces, whether that's packed trail or paved surfaces, you're not getting, you're not feeling the lugs underfoot. It's just a really nice mix of everything. So I think this is by far my favorite part of this shoe is the fact that we have the Chirag outsole on it. I am really looking forward to getting a final production version of the Kaboish in the proper size because I think I'm going to get a ton of use out of it. Now, I do think I'm always going to prefer the simplicity and minimalism of this, the normal Chirag. This is just such a beautiful shoe for my preferences for trail running, plus the terrain I have to run here, which again is very technical, up and down, very rocky. This is just the best mix of a ton of different things. But I do think I'm going to get a lot of use out of the Kaboish because being able to change the midsole is going to change the fit in the feel of that based on the terrain that I want. I do think I'm going to use uh, certain midsoles more than others, mainly the KB2 Reactive. I just like that compound in the Kaboish, but I think that's going to be the case for anyone who actually buys this shoe. So this is going to be a quite interesting shoe uh, to really pay attention to if you want sort of a do-it-all literal Swiss Army knife for the trail. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.